Hello and welcome to the Digital Insight, the technology, procurement and supply chain podcast that delivers valuable sea level perspective into the core issues surrounding business transformation and digital disruption. Each episode will bring you the most inspiring executive insights from those who are leading transformation strategies within the world's biggest and best known companies. The Digital Insight. Disrupt. Transform. Avant. Welcome to the Digital Insight, the official podcast series for Interface and CPO Strategy magazines. This week is part two of the Digital Transformation Trilogy with Dr. Paul J. Ballow. And this week, Paul talks about the importance of planning when it comes to plotting a successful digital transformation. So, Paul, welcome back to the Digital Insight. Uh, Andrew, a pleasure being here. And I believe uh, today is part two of our three-part series on digital transformation. Um, and today, I believe we are focusing on the importance of planning. Yeah, the critical piece to any digital transformation, Andrew, is really the planning phase. And it is truly the hardest. I actually think the planning of a digital transformation in an enterprise-wide uh, initiative is really the successes in the planning. And um, there's a lot of pieces that have to happen. I think the execution is easy. The planning is harder. Um, I think when you start thinking about this, I think the first thing organizations need to do is do a, uh, an evaluation, a diagnose really what change is needed, right? Because when we start talking about digital transformation, we're talking about the core reason an organization exists and how it functions. So when we start thinking about transformation and digital, it's it's the data, it's the model, it's the rethinking of how we get from point A to point B in the fastest, most efficient way. But we have to understand why is this change necessary, right? What do we what is the goal here and what's driving this? What's that performance gap and what's that opportunity gap? And then I think we have to start thinking about is what are we designing for? What form of change is this called for? And I know as being a, a GE, they have always trained us as Six Sigma black belts, what's in scope and what's out of scope. I think once people get onto the digital transformation bandwagon and you start initiating large enterprise wide initiatives, more and more things get in. And I think as a leader, we're going to have to say in a very nice way, no, not today, but there's another project for that. So we have to make sure that we understand what form of the change is called for and what's in scope. And is the scope radical digital transformation change or is it incremental? And once again, it's a matter of assessing the organization to see if they're ready for it. And then in terms of the design, is it coming from the top down? Or is it coming from the bottom up? Both work very well. Um, sometimes in my experience, I've seen bottom up actually last the test of time. Sometimes if you have this digital transformation coming from the top down, it's almost forced on to people, but you really want people to come. Then the third piece of this puzzle is really delivery. It's, it's you know how are we going to make this change? What are the actions that need to be taken? What skills will I need? And will this be effective, right? So the delivery, I think, is, is the easy part because this is all about people, technology, data, and pushing this through an organization that may not be ready. I believe before we even do the diagnosis, the design, and the delivery, we have to assess, is the organization ready? Do they, do they really want this? Are they, are they ready for this change? Because there's real four, four critical parts of, of, of this change. It's diagno, diagno, uh, identify really what needs to be changed, design, deliver, and then constantly, constantly evaluate and monitor, right? So we have to have these four pillars in place. But before any of this happens, we need to make sure that the organization is ready for this. Do they have a climate of change? And I always refer back to, uh, Kotler's eight steps model, right? And it, there's three pillars within that model. Does the organization have a climate for digital transformation? 
Is this just a shiny object for today? Does the leadership really just doing this to keep the shareholders happy and it's the right flavor of the month? Or do they realize that digital is, is what we will truly be? That the culture, the mindset, the processes will be radically changed and never going back to the old way. So you really have to understand, does the organization have a climate of digital transformation? And in there, does it have a sense of urgency? Is this, is this have the fire that it needs in order to push this through the organization? Do you have the right team, right? Do you have that, that thought leadership team in order to guide the team through this urgency of change within the climate of change in the organization? I always like to uh, create the uh, vortexes wherever I worked in major companies at uh, American Express or MasterCard or the Federal Reserve or Citibank. I always love having a small group of people and then growing that group of people into a vortex where no one could stop this idea of, of, of change. And into that confines of climate of change, you have the sense of urgency, you have the building of the team, and most importantly, you get to the vision piece. So when you have the fundamentals of the process, you have to encapsulate it into this vision of how this change is going to happen, how this digital transformation is going to happen. Because I believe there are only two constants in the world. One is the search for eternal love, the ability for people to be cared for and loved and to fit into an organization. And the other constant in the world is constant, ever forgiving change. These two things scare people. And when you start creating this, this climate of change, you're going to smell it in the air, air you're going to feel it, you're going to feel your, your hair in the back of your neck stand up, you're going to have your spidey sense that things are rapidly changing, and what was happening in the past will never happen again in this world of digital transformation. On the second huge pillar for digital transformation, it's really engaging and enabling the organization, right? And this is critical. I mean, in, in board meetings that I'm in, I spend 90% 90 my, 90 of my time communicating, 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 getting everyone on the same page. It's communicate to get buy-in, but understanding it's not just spewing information out. It is clearly detailing how my life will change with this digital transformation. What does it mean for me? How do I get on board with this? And do I even want to get on board with this? And when you have the organization on board and you have a sense of urgency and you built the, the guiding team and you see the right vision and everyone's on board with it and you over, 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 over communicate this, you then need to empower the people to do it. You need to be that safeguard for people. You need to bless off on the fact that they have your power whatever that power may be, to march forward to make the digital transformation that you've all agreed to. And then before anyone gets really scared and before the senior leaders say no and in many form, you have to start thinking about the short wins. You can't wait a year to get a win. You need to get the short wins in digital transformation of having good meetings in terms of building the new technology, in terms of prototyping the new technology, bringing in the new data sharing that vision. And then once you get past this idea of these short wins, there's no going back. It's, it's pedal to the metal. It's this idea of implementing this concepts of digital transformation. It's this idea that there is no going back because people will fall back, right? There, there are going to be early adopters. There are going to be people who basically say, mm, I'm not going to be an innovator. Maybe, maybe I'll put my toes in, but they don't really have their heart, mind, and souls. And then once you get from innovator to early adopter, then you really push forward to the early major adopters. And then you have them. But when thinking about these don't give up, right? This is, this is the, the tipping point. It's the fact that people are not with you as an organization 100% of the time in your digital transformation initiative. It's, it's keep pushing so they see the reality, they feel it, they taste it, they believe it, they're part of it, and then make sure it sticks because people will go back. And you have to be pushing on this idea of the climate of change. You have to be pushing and putting energy 
on enabling the organization to act and think and function digitally. And you have to put a ton of energy as a leader into this implementation of sustaining the change. And I believe if done right, there should be no policing of any of this. That, that if you have the buy-in early on with a sense of urgency, that there is no going back. And I like to build things like the Roman aqueduct where it will last a lifetime. But the fundamental initiative here in digital transformation isn't the fact that you're making initiative of a project. You're fundamentally changing the core foundation of a reason an organization exists, gutting that organization and bringing in more efficient processes, more digital processes, bringing in new technology, artificial intelligence, and then bringing all the data to monitor and control us. And by the way, this is ongoing. This doesn't happen after you're done. It keeps on going now and forever. And obviously you mentioned there the critical nature of establishing this vortex. And I guess, you know, with regards to planning, um, being able to put those people in that position is, is vital, isn't it? And being able to see people's qualities and strengths. Absolutely. And it's almost like our, our first uh, of our trilogy, our first version. Do you have the right people? Right. I mean, um, someone could be real successful historically in organization, but in my own personal executive experience, um, it's really hard to get the right people who have the digital mindset, who's who've led this, these initiatives on an enterprise level, who've been able to be successful in transforming large institutions into a living, breathing digital organism. And that that sense of people. Do you have the right skills? Do you have the right behavior? Do you have the right thinking? Do you have the right leadership in order to pull this forward? And a lot of times the people that you may have in an organization as a leader, you may have to realize these are not the right players. These are not the right people to get you to where you need to be. They may not be the right people to create this sense of urgency. They may not be the right people to help build a correlation a coalition of people to lead this change. They may not be the right people developing the vision and strategy for the change because they may have been in that organization way too long. And in terms of digital, the critical piece is this idea of changing and seeing the world differently and bringing in these experiences from other institutions, from other industries, and seeing the world differently. And in my personal experience and from my academic clinical background, People who've been in an organization a very long time, their minds have been wired a certain way. For a digital leader trying to plan this out, you can't have that legacy thinking. You have to, you need that foundation piece, but the thinking has to be transformative. It has to be a way that I, you know, like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Those are the type of people you want in the room with you. Those are the people who are going to make digital transformation planning highly successful. And I guess that's all, you know, those types of people, if you like, are also vital to creating this idea of a, of a climate of change, aren't they? Because it really is people-based. Exactly. Everything's people-based. Digital transformation is all about the right people, helping get that sense of urgency, helping drive the fact that this is comfortable and that we can make this happen. It helps to get the right people to reinforce, to get the right vision, but it also helps in order to communicate the change vision and, and get people comfortable and happy with that by getting the right people on your team and clearly articulating it. And I don't mean in a transactional base, but I mean by breathing it, living it, feeling it, and being a prophet of digital. Because these are very, very difficult jobs. This idea of, uh, you know, chief digital officer, chief digital transformation officer. Um, when you're planning, it's not, you know, it's not a power base of a title. It's getting your peers and the baseline people in the organization to be part of this. And in my mind, it's a little bit of brainwashing that there are better ways and there are always better ways in order to do things. But what's been accelerating this is the technology and the data in this idea of digital transformation where we could accelerate things faster than we've ever seen it and to rethink the way things are happening in the world.
and to empower people in order to do this. And once again, what we're by empowering, we're trying to remove the obstacles for the people in this group, in this digital transformation process, remove the structures, make sure they got access to the right systems, make sure you're giving them air cover because people hate change. Hence the reason the better the plan, the better the communication, people will understand what's happening. You could prepare for them. You could train them. You could educate them and then everyone would be happier. But there's no going back. It's, it's, I think like we said on our, on our, in our first uh, series of the trilogies, you're going to have to burn the boats when you come to the island. There is no going back. Right. So, so if you go back to, you know, Codler's, uh, step model, it's, it's no going back, right? It's, it's, you gotta, you're going to move this forward and this company will never be the same again because there will be a lot of pain and suffering that's happening and people would want to go back to what they're normally used to. And that cannot happen. That company and those organizations will not exist. Those days are over the way the world is functioning, the way the world is rapidly moving the way in which clients are demanding more and more from their organizations. It's insane to me that not every single organization has a chief digital transformation officer or a chief digital officer. There's no way they're going to survive. And once again, that skill set is in the planning. It's in the communication. It's gluing the right people together and making sure that you, you're self-confident, that you are willing to support that team and you're willing to not give up and get everyone on board and then quickly get some short wins so people could get the flavor of winning to get that feeling of winning to build confidence and then to get bigger and bigger successes i don't usually in my opinion in the planning session just go for the big wins i it, i don't ever see that really happening if anything i see those big wins happen really quickly and in a very short period of time, Andrew, they all fall apart. And that's what get people frustrated, that they're, it's just poor planning. This does take time because this is an evolution of moving an organization that might be 25, 50, 100 years uh, in establishment that you're now coming in and saying, by the way, there's a better way to do this. And by the way, the world is mandating that you do this. And by the way, if you don't do this, you may not be around. So the planning piece in conjunction with the leadership piece are vital in order to enabling organizations to be, be uh, extremely successful in this art of digital transformation. And in terms of planning itself, I mean, is there a way in which sometimes you can over plan a transformation as well? Yes, absolutely. So. You have to figure out the appetite for the people in the organization of how much information you want to give them and how much information they can digest. So you have to regulate it and you have to really have high level of emotional intelligence. And I think you have to have a high level of street sense and you have to quickly be able to assess the organization and the assess the people around you. How much can they actually take without breaking them? And how much do you need to give them? so that you can move the needle forward. And this takes a high amount of executive level leadership slash energy. That this should be juicing you up in the morning and you should be like the profit of moving these organizations forward. And it is a ton of fun in the planning session. You also have to be able to say, we don't have the plan right, we need to go back and adjust it. The planning component of all phases, there's abilities to go forward and back in the planning phase in case you make a mistake and you will make a mistake. You just have to own up to it, make the mistake and keep moving forward. To push you to the implementation phase and the critical piece, if you do this right, is to sustain it. Where people don't say, you know, in the olden days we did it this way. That should never be in the mantra of people in the organization. This is the new way. This is the new approach. These are the new behaviors. Here's how we communicate. Here's how we interact. And we're here to help support you with training, with performance management systems, with controls, with watching what's happening and constantly, constantly improving on this process. 
And once again, it's about the people, the process, and the technology all, all weaved into one into this digital transformation initiative on an enterprise-wide level. It is not easy in the planning phase. It is not easy to get the vision. It is not easy to get people to see the urgency about this, that other organizations are eating your lunch. It's not easy getting the right people. Um, there are very few people who, who do this at a very uh, high level and who are successful um, because of just the, the makeup of this. Um, and also the idea of communicating and over-communicating and on the board level and on the C level to get everyone moving in the right direction. But it's never giving up and making it stick. Because if you cannot implement and sustain the change, you wasted a lot of people's time and money and energy. So you have to build that climate. So once again, in this idea of digital transformation, it's really building the climate of change and getting everything primed in the pump to then move the organization to engage them and enable the organization in this art of digital transformation and then implementing, sustaining this change for now and forever. Also understanding at some point, you will go through this whole process again. And this is what I think people go crazy with, that this is not a, a single process. This is, a, a, this is not a linear process. This is a circular process. It's now and forever that this goes on in the world of digital transformation planning. Yeah, I think it's really looking at um, this idea of the organization and the culture and understanding how the culture, you could assess the culture and understand how you're going to move this idea because this idea of digital transformation planning, the biggest friction is usually in the culture of the organization where we didn't do it that way. We don't think of it that way. This is not how we do things. And that's that. there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how people's minds are wired. So what we have to start thinking about is how do we move people forward? How do we, how do we get people to think a different way. I, I like to, and it's not the right word, but it's almost like brainwashing people in a sense of understanding that what got you here will not get you there, that the world has changed. And in this planning sense, you have to have this culture of digital, of this idea of transformation, of this concept of data, of this concept of design, of this concept of of a service or product circulating and gravitating with the customer in the heart of this. And then moving it to a world where people will really be embraced by this and understanding that you have to build in the planning phase, the right behaviors, the right values, the right decision-making norms, and then drive to those outcomes that you want. So when you start looking at this, a lot of the failures that I've seen in digital transformation have to do more with the culture and not assessing the culture correctly and the behaviors and values that don't align with digital planning and digital transformation. So you have to be aware of what that culture is in that organization and put a lot of energy and thinking around that and, and build a plan of how you're going to insert this idea of digital transformation in that culture so that the organization does get this idea of an urgency of change and that they do get this idea that things will be different and get this idea that things will be very different and that things will be changing. So you really have to think about, you know, getting this buy-in and get them to be aware and then get them to be self-concerned and then get them to try this out and then hold their hands and then get them to accept it and then be the champion. This is all about the psychology of building commitment for change, right? In the planning phase, it's not just here's the plan of attack and I get my MS project going. It's, it's really that cultural piece. And the fundamental pieces are, is, is the culture aware of this, right? Are you, are you just sort of people looking at you saying, what are you talking about? We're making all this money. Well, what do I need to be aware about? And then the question is, is do you realize other organizations are eating your lunch? Do you have self-concern? And then you really want to think about, okay, let's try this out mentally. Let's see if this works on people in the culture and then hold their hand and show them that what is happening can't happen anymore because we're losing the fight. We're losing the market share and then mentally get them to accept the plan of digital transformation and then become the champion of digital transformation. And help people to be successful. And this is, this is sort of this idea of, of planning 
but it's really planning about the culture. If you could get that culture and you get the people to buy in, then you really got them. Then you have a greater success level of, of increasing this idea of urgency and creating that right climate of change. And then really building in this idea of empowering the employees and the team um, and engaging them in the whole organization. And then really building successful implementations and sustaining that change without having to police it. Because my rule of thumb, if I have built, when I build things, I build it like water, meaning that water will find its, 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 its natural path. Digital transformation will find its natural path, and there shouldn't be any policing in whatever you do in terms of your digital transformation processes and any service or products that you build. It should be natural, like breathing air. And I guess once you've you know, uh, successfully created this um, climate of change, I guess it must be quite a, an intoxicating um, environment in a way, in, in a positive sense. There's no, better, there's no better environment known that I know of. <laughs> it, is, it is living and breathing at it on the edge. This idea of change because it's who we are as human beings. It's also known as evolution, to understand that change is who we are and once again, I go back to the foundations. There's only two constants in the world. One constant, seeking eternal love. The other constant, constant change. So all we're doing is what's natural to us in the right speed, with the right impact, with the right feasibility to move organizations in the culture. Um, and also, I, I think the greatest fun is really helping organizations to be more successful, right? That they could last another 50 years or another 100 years. because it the times are radically changing as we all know and we have to be able to rethink the core of these business models and that's what digital planning is all about rethinking how we do our business rethinking what the future looks like rethinking what the future looks like with new clients different clients z gen x gen what they're demanding from us embracing the new technology embracing the new data analytics embracing the new thinking that's what digital transformation planning is all about. It's getting ahead of all this at a rapid speed. Thank you for listening to the Digital Insight Podcast in association with the interface.net and cpostrategy.com. The Digital Insight is brought to you by B2E Media Limited. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review. And don't forget to check out our podcast archive at www.b2e-media.com forward slash the digital insight.